Good evening, welcome back to the channel. Tonight we are going to photograph the stars, of course, but we're going to look a little bit deeper and all with this little device here. So uh, let's check it out. So if you have been following this channel a little bit longer now, you know I am mainly a landscape astrophotographer. But in the past I have yeah, had quite some experience shooting deep sky myself. And that involved uh, shooting with large telescope setups on big expensive mounts, uh, computerized stuff. And yeah, it was all great fun, but I was mainly shooting in my backyard, uh, looking to eight streetlights, sitting inside, seeing the exposures come in on my computer. And I really wanted to be out on the dark dark skies like these again. But yeah, those setups are not portable at all. And then Dwarf Labs contacted me if I would like to try out their smart telescope, the Dwarf 2. So yeah, I was really curious and I said yes, actually let me show you. It is super portable with only this device. I should be able to do some deep sky photography here in the field. So uh, let's check it out. The Dwarf 2 telescope is a uh, smart telescope, as I said before, and that means it's an all-in-one device. So this little thing uh, has go-to functionality. Uh, it is controlled by an app uh, on your phone uh, for, or, or on your, on your tablet. And um, it also does live stacking. It has uh, autofocus and yeah, you can just program a photo sequence and it does all the work for you. And yeah. It is great because it's so portable. I, uh, when I was shooting deep sky before uh, a couple of years ago, uh, yeah, those really large setups were just not handy at all uh, to bring into the field. But this, yeah, you can just slip it in your pocket or in your or in your li little bag. Actually, I've also uh, taken this with me without any problem in my hand luggage uh, to Spain. But we had not enough clear skies. But uh, talking about clear skies. I think uh, the clouds are uh, clearing at the moment, so let's uh, quickly set this thing up. Okay, in my enthusiasm to set it up, I almost forgot to tell you what's in the bag itself. Well, of course you have the smart telescope, but in this uh, little bag what you also get is, uh, of course, a battery. Uh, this goes on pretty well. Um, you also um, have a little tripod, uh, which is excellent. Um, you also get a memory card of uh, 64 gigabytes. And um, if you have the deluxe version, you also get a, a filter set uh, with a solar filter so you can shoot the sun and uh, with an ultra high contrast filter in it also. I have the deluxe version, you also get an extra battery by the way. But uh, yeah, it's clearing so quickly let's set it up. You're mostly interested in what it does, right? <laughs> Before we begin, let me first uh, do a little disclaimer. Uh, Dwarf Labs have gifted me the Dwarf 2. I will not have to return it in exchange uh, that I share my experiences here on YouTube. And I said, yeah, that's a great deal. Uh, under one condition, only if I can say about the device what I really want. So all my opinions here are based uh, on my own experiences and uh, Dwarf Labs uh, do not have um, any influence on what I say in this video. So good to know. Let's set it up. So I have uh, put a small Arca Swiss plate on this so that it uh, fits my little bit larger tripod. But it would also be absolutely fine, of course, if you just use the small uh, tri tabletop tripod, which uh, comes with the Dwarf 2. Um, yeah, I have uh, put it on the tripod. Let's uh, put it on and uh, see how it goes. <laughs> So the Dwarf is now a reasonably level on the uh, tripod. I'm now going to start up the app to connect it. Okay, so it's uh, now found the Dwarf. We're going to connect to the Dwarf. It says it's going to connect via Bluetooth. I think it also makes a Wi-Fi connection, which is good. So this is the interface. Um, first we'll uh, have to uh, check 
if the cameras are out, there are actually two lenses uh, on this little device. There's a wide-angle lens, which really helps to find something in the sky. And there's also a telephoto lens. We're mainly interested, of course, in the telephoto lens. The telephoto lens uh, has an equivalent uh, focal length of 675 millimeters. So that would fit Andromeda, for example, perfectly. So we might shoot that tonight, but in the meantime, clouds are rolling over again. So uh, yeah, let's just see if we can calibrate it. Um, maybe I should do a focus first, but it looks kind of in focus. So let's just go to the Astro module. And I want to choose features and I want to calibrate. It's now going to calibrate. Calibration success, easy. Okay, so uh, we are now calibrated, so this means it can now automatically go to somewhere in the sky what you want to photograph. And um, one of the best targets to photograph right now is uh, right above me, almost in the zenith. And uh, that's of course the Andromeda galaxy, that's our neighboring galaxy. And uh, it should fit the 675 millimeters focal length of this uh, telescope pretty well. So let's. Um, Look it up. Um, let's click on auto go to. Yeah, we have a catalog. Okay, there are some planets. It's a M31, the Andromeda galaxy. It's pretty cliche, but it's so good. Let's now click on confirm and see if the dwarf can find it. Yep, looks like uh, it does the job pretty well. Go to plate solving. Okay, it's now adjusting. There it is, in the middle of the frame, immediately. Fantastic. All right, so it's, uh, it has found the Andromeda Galaxy easily, just with the touch of a button. Um, I will double check my focus. So click here. And I'm going to do it manually. It has also an autofocus option, but uh, I've played around uh, with it a little bit at my house. And I think I do like to just double check my manual focus. All right, that looks good. Let's uh, do another auto go to, confirm. So that it just adjusts uh, yeah, the composition again. Go to tracking is confirmed and I uh, can see the Andromeda galaxy here. Do we have more? Okay. So uh, I guess we're now going to shoot. Um, I'm choosing a gain of uh, 80, uh, infrared pass, I think that's fine. Shutter speed, uh, it's at one second, let's just increase this. Uh, the dwarf can shoot up to 15 seconds. Um, uh, normally in deep sky photography you shoot a little bit longer, uh, one, two, three, four minutes maybe even, but it uh, seems to be a limitation of the sensor capabilities. And I'm totally fine with this because the price of this thing, I haven't even said it yet, this is only only 420 euros I think for the basic version and the deluxe version is uh, 540 euros uh, at the time we are speaking at the moment. So uh, that's pretty good. Um, there's coming up a car now so I, <laughs> I will put it on pause and I'll come back to you uh, in a minute. Cars have passed. <laughs> All right, let's uh, shoot and see how this thing stacks. So while the uh, dwarf is shooting behind you, actually let me just stop it because the clouds are come uh, rolling in again. But uh, you see that it does some live stacking. Uh, I'm recording the screen right now. Um, here you can see the preview of the Andromeda Galaxy. It looks brilliant. It has now uh, 39 shots in, I think. And there's also a stretch function, which um, um, enables you in the app itself to uh, manipulate your data. So uh, let's just add some contrast here. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, so we're stretching the data a bit. Let's make the sky a little bit more darker. And boom. <laughs> wow. Just like this. 
we have Andromeda Galaxy here on the screen only in about 10-15 minutes so it actually looks pretty good. The stars look a bit bloated but it could also be um, yeah, because I'm stretching the date and now live or maybe also because of the sky conditions we are getting some yeah, high clouds over uh, every now and then but uh, hey <laughs> our neighbor galaxy there it is. So there was uh, Andromeda Galaxy for only about a couple of minutes of uh, exposures and it uh, looked really recognizable already, pretty good. Uh, the auto stacking also does a really decent job. Um, I have decided now uh, there's another gap uh, in the clouds um, to try out a little a bit of more uh, of a challenge. I have um, aimed uh, the dwarf at the Triangulum Galaxy M33. That's a lot fainter uh, than compared to Andromeda but uh, yeah, let's see how it does with that target. I'm kind of getting the hang of this. It's actually pretty easy to use. In the beginning, I had to get a little bit used uh, on the interface, but I'm now shooting my third target. Um, I've uh, collected some data on Boats and Cigar Galaxy. It's M81 and M82, and that's, there you have two small, well, relatively small galaxies into one frame. Um, yeah, the clouds have also uh, disappeared more and more and more, so it's getting better. Um, yeah, I'm actually really enjoying myself. Uh, until now, I think uh, yeah, the Dwarf is pretty easy to use. Um, even after about a couple of minutes uh, of collecting data, you can get the uh, deep sky targets visible. Um, and maybe uh, I will try it on also a, um, a nebula, maybe. We've uh, only tried now um, some galaxies. so. Uh, I see the Pleiades behind me. Maybe we can try them Pleiades or maybe somewhere around Cygnus. Cygnus is also beautiful. Actually, I'm seeing the Milky Way over right now. It's really getting clear. So yeah, I'm going to check for a nebula. <laughs> So the uh, dwarf is now uh, shooting uh, the Pleiades star cluster. It already looked pretty good. I saw uh, some blue nebula already after five minutes of exposures. Um, yeah, as you can see, uh, the sickness is behind me. Uh, it is getting super clear, but yeah, I've been out for now, I think about two hours. So I think I might uh, wrap it up here on location, uh, but I will definitely tomorrow, I think, look at the shots on my computer and uh, yeah, I'll share my final thoughts, what I think of the Dwarf 2 Smart Telescope from Dwarf Labs. Or maybe I'll shoot one more target. I'm not sure because it's pretty fun. <laughs> Okay, so we are now back in the office and uh, what do I think of the Dwarf 2 Smart Telescope from Dwarf Lab? Well, I definitely had some great fun with the device uh, in the field. It is extremely portable, it is easy, uh, easy to use and it's also very quick to set up. And within only a matter of minutes I had my first views into deep space coming in on my smartphone. So, that's really excellent. I mean, if someone a couple of years ago told me uh, that uh, such a device was possible at these price points, I wouldn't have believed it. <laughs> of course, there are always some points I'd like to see improved on a device. And the first thing I noticed on the Dwarf was, uh, I already said it in the field, but that the stars appear to be a bit bloated. That means that the stars appear a bit larger than I would like them to be. And at first I thought maybe it's the sky conditions. So we had some high clouds coming over, which all yeah, sometimes give that uh, yeah, glow effect on the stars. But I've also used it at home under very clear skies and the results were kind of the same. Then I thought,
thought maybe it is the infrared filter, uh, which I had on pass in the field, but also if I do an infrared cut, uh, it's also the same. And also stacking uh, the FITS files myself in uh, PixInsight, uh, that also gave uh, the same star. So yeah, it's not a really big deal per se, but I think it's good to know. I also found uh, that the uh, autofocus algorithm of the Dwarf 2 uh, works really well during the day and at night it works sometimes, you know, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, I would definitely suggest if you use it to just double check your focus manually. Uh, I've also talked about this uh, uh, at, uh, with a team at the Dwarf Lab and they ensured me they will keep working on the uh, autofocus algorithm. So I expect it uh, yeah, to keep on improving with the uh, software releases they do. Another weird thing I noticed uh, was uh, that I wasn't able to fine tune my composition when I was in the astro mode. If you are in the normal photo mode, you get a sort of joystick and you can move the camera around. Uh, but in the astro mode, maybe it was just me again, but uh, the joystick was gone and I wasn't able to change my composition. Well, it has an excellent uh, auto go-to uh, functionality, but for example, um, the Andromeda Galaxy, I would have liked it to be a little bit more down in my composition so that the satellite gets Galaxy above it would be a bit better in the frame so not really a big deal but uh, yeah maybe something uh, to look into. When I first took a look uh, in the auto go to catalog I noticed there were not uh, a lot of targets in there uh, so uh, I've also talked uh, at the team at Dwarf Lab about that and they uh, ensured me that uh, the next software release which is coming very soon I think that they will include 500 targets in space so 500 targets, that's plenty, so uh, that will be fine. <laughs> now, is the Dwarf 2 Smart Telescope something for you? Well, let me first uh, tell you it is not a competition for a serious deep sky astrophotography rig. However, I really don't think it is supposed to be. I mean, if you really want the best photo quality out there, you must also be willing in this uh, deep sky photography hobby to invest a lot more time and a lot more money compared to the dwarf. And I'm seriously talking 10 times more money and 10 times more time uh, compared to using the, uh, something uh, like the dwarf too. So take that in mind. If on the other hand, you are just really curious about what's out there in space, or maybe you are uh, a beginning photographer and you are not really looking forward to all the technical faff, uh, which is coupled with a, a deep sky astrophotography setup, like uh, checking your back focus or uh, ordering the wrong cables with the wrong connections. Believe me, I've been there multiple times. <laughs> well, then the Dwarf 2 really might be something for you. Imagine yourself uh, after a very relaxing night without worrying about your equipment outside. Uh, you immediately have uh, the pictures uh, on your phone of what you've explored that night and you can just share them on uh, social media or show them to your friends. Um, it's also really easy to set up if you are just sitting outside somewhere having a barbecue for example or I can also imagine uh, the dwarf being very interesting for an astronomy club. Uh, if you have a uh, public night you can show the public uh, what's out there in space within no time. So I really think the Dwarf 2 is a stunning piece of technology and you can have lots of fun with it. It might just get you super into uh, the world of astronomy and even more curious about what's out there in space. So there you have it. I really hope you have uh, enjoyed this video again and that I've given you a good idea of what to expect from the Dwarf 2 Smart Telescope from Dwarf Lab. For now, I really thank you again for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.